Every scene starts with a primary scene heading that identifies the camera placement, location, and the time of day, assuming we aren't in outer space. But if you've watched the previous video in this series, then you know there are situations within scenes where it's not always necessary to make a completely new primary heading. Instead, we can use secondary headings, also known as subheadings, minor headings, mini slugs, or sometimes shot headings. A flicker of a smile crosses Miles' face. Bernardo grins. Later. The class heads out. Bernardo stops Ruby and Miles. The information you find in these secondary headings can always be included within a master heading, and we'll cover that in this video. But giving them their own line when the rest of the information can be inferred, instead of annoyingly repeated, helps keep your script clear and concise. And when you truly master secondary headings, they become a tool to direct the mind's eye of your reader and the pacing of your story. Since secondary heading info can always be included in the master heading, secondary headings follow almost the same formatting rules as primary ones. But while double or triple spacing before primary scene headings is common, secondary headings are usually only double line spaced. In the last video, we talked about how a continuous action from one location to another can be marked with continuous as the time of day. Interior, television studio, the parents' green room, continuous. But sometimes that can already be obvious from context, so the time of day element isn't always all that important in the writer's draft. And if that continuous action connects two interior locations or two exterior locations, then it's also obvious that the camera placement element doesn't change. In these cases, the new location is the only changed element, which is why you'll sometimes see the new location all on its own as a secondary heading. As long as it's still clear on the page, this can make it much easier to write and read a scene that moves around a larger location. We also touched on scenes that take place in the exact same location but jump forward in time. Exterior, road, day, moments later. In these cases, we can use a secondary scene heading with only the time of day information written as later or moments later, because we know we're in the same place and the camera hasn't suddenly teleported from inside to outside. If it has, you need a new master scene heading. But locations and time of day are so last video, so let's get to the new stuff. When we write a screenplay, we imagine the story in our mind's eye. We literally envision the movie or series as if it was playing out right in front of us. Usually the exact framing or angle isn't all that important and is best left to the director and their DP to figure out. It's their jobs, not ours. But in the rare cases where there is a compelling reason to describe a specific shot, here's how you do it with a scene heading. If the shot will be used for the full scene, include it in the primary heading, either at the end or between the location and the time of day, usually separated by a space and dash. Exterior, beach, shark's point of view, night. But if it's only for a specific moment within a scene, we can use a secondary heading containing only the shot. Brody hears a shrill scream from the water. He stretches to look past the group, to see what's happening out there. Brody's point of view. This is where the name shot heading comes from. Shots can describe the shot size like a wide, close up, or establishing shot. The framing like a point of view, over the shoulder, or two shot. The focus like shallow or deep. The angle like a low angle or aerial shot. The movement like a dolly, pan, or tracking shot or even the tool or technique used, like a jib or handheld shot. And the ones you just saw barely even scratched the surface. But honestly, it's incredibly difficult to find a compelling reason to explicitly use nearly any shot in most scripts, which is why doing so is often a sign of an amateur writer who doesn't understand the difference between a writer's draft and a production draft, or doesn't understand their role in the collaborative process of filmmaking. If you're still convinced you need to add the shot, don't do it yet. First, see if you can better communicate the information in the description. For example, you almost never see establishing used in the headings of modern scripts. Exterior, MIT campus, establishing shot, morning. Because a scene that describes a larger location without any significant action or important characters is already clearly an establishing shot. If I still haven't changed your mind, it's probably because you've seen real scripts full of detailed shots. But these are usually production scripts that the director and DP have gone through to decide those shots or establish director slash writer scripts where the screenwriter is already set to direct the project they're writing. If you're still unwavering, then maybe you're right. Maybe you have a scene that needs to be shot from the point of view of a killer in order to show they're there without revealing their identity. Exterior slash interior. Myers house. Night. Subjective point of view. Or perhaps your character picks up a camcorder to record a message that should look like a handheld shot. Interior. Canyon. Day. Video message. If so, go confidently and write it. While there's rarely a reason to use a shot to direct the camera from the page, writers have another tool at their disposal to direct the mind's eye of the reader, subjects. While the shot describes exactly how you want something to be framed, 
The subject indicates who or what to focus on. Interior, warehouse, day, Mr. Blonde and cop. Subjects are usually slotted after the shot, if you have one, and separated from the other elements with dashes. And like shots, they can be included in primary headings or used as secondary headings. Shots and subjects can even be combined into a single element. Close up, cop's face. There's also a special kind of shot used to feature a uniquely important subject called an insert shot, where a close up shot of a subject is literally inserted into the scene to point out visual information vital to the plot or character development. Insert laptop. Krista's Gmail, Facebook, iTunes. We land on her eHarmony profile. But you see them less and less these days because a subject heading already gets your reader to imagine the subject close up. If the laptop screen already gets their mind's eye envisioning a laptop, why do you even need to add the insert? Taken all together, secondary headings are a great tool for you to use if you need to break up separate actions occurring in a single location or simplifying condensed movement between related locations. They can transform a page full of dense text into something with a completely new rhythm, balanced white space, and chunking that breaks the beats into clear self-contained moments. How you use these headings is how you control the pace of your action and story and gives your work a unique style that separates you from the rest of the pack. But sometimes you need to tell the reader something important about your scene that just doesn't fit into the standard scene heading elements, which is why you should check out this video to learn how to use scene heading notes to clear up timelines, identify dreams or flashbacks, and much more.